Easy. I, I got a script. Which I'm definitely not going to stick to because I'm going to forget it. Fantastic. <laughs> that is the way I like to host also. Welcome everyone, my name is Alester and welcome to this new show, HTHT, which is a show with deep questions and a lot of alcohol. Mm. So, today, right now, we are here with John Lim. Hi! You guys know him as John Jona, you guys know him as a TSL personality, but I know him as a supervisor who will always ask me to shut up every <laughs> single time I sing. Every single time. So, you should hear him singing though. <laughs> so, right now, Yes, we are going to ask him a lot of questions from his $100 nomad experience to having a life swap with a migrant worker. So mm. I'm sure he has a lot of insights to say. So welcome, John. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. So do you do a lot of HTHT? Okay, HTHT, I would say I do a lot more when I was in uni. And, then and uh, also when I am tipsy. Tipsy? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very poetic side <laughs> to it. Us opening up the bottle, so okay, let's great. go. Let's get the yeah. first sip. Can I just say that this is the most wretched beer I have seen ever. It's called Lucky Buddha. Enlightened beer. Enli- enlightened beer. I feel like we're going to get high off I, this. I, I, <laughs> the bottle has a Buddha on it. I'm ready to get turned. That's right. Cheers, bro. Cheers. You know it's not that bad. It tastes like beer. All beers taste the same. Tastes a little <laughs> better than Tiger. From the introduction, you can tell that John has many, many names. Yeah. So first name is John Jonah. So okay. why John Jonah? Like what made you go into Instagram and sign up and think that, hey, John Jonah, <laughs> great idea. <laughs> Fantastic idea. Okay, so like, like that's my Instagram handle, by the way. So like, I created it during, during NS, I believe, because like that was when social media really started to kick off. Remember Instagram, right? Still being the... Uh, the old logo with yeah. the brown colour camera yes. you know and stuff like that and then like iPhone 3GS <laughs> you know I was in sec 1 eh. <laughs> exactly that's okay, my right, point right. exactly so what happened was that like I created it then like uh, that, uh, there was a nickname that was given to me when I was in JC mm-hmm. right then they got, the people would be like hey John John ah. <laughs> confirmation name is Edward that's so true why Edward okay so for those of you that don't know what confirmation name is well, I'm, I'm Catholic yeah. right so like when I was in when I was fifteen years old, so they gave me a confirmation, asked me to choose a confirmation name. So I chose Edward lah. There is a yeah. big reason to that. Okay? okay. So like biblically, right? John has the connotation of being like humility. Yeah. As you can Which see. Which complete. As you can see. <laughs> and then uh, Edward Edward is like it has the connotation of royalty. So it's a little okay. bit like humility and royalty. So it's like servant leadership. Like. Oi. Are your mind blown yet? But so then, as you can see, and then like, it turned out like this. Like what yeah, what Alastair said lah. So <laughs> I basically embodied my names very well, and I think uh, turned out fantastically. Thank you, bum. <laughs> <laughs> so like, have you known by so many names, right? Mm. On the street, do people recognize you as John, or do they recognize you as? Are you TSL? Oh my god, you're TSL. Honestly, can I take a photo with you? Honestly, it's the second one. But then, does it bother you that that like no one thinks of you as? John. You know, honestly, sometimes it does, especially initially towards the start when people only recognize me through my TSL work. Yeah. But in, in the end, I managed to, to think about it in a different way because I'm glad that my work is being recognized by people and mm. people are remembering me for my work. Even if it's not. Even if it's, it's not necessarily TSL, yeah. my, my uh, creative output. It may be just my hosting output. Okay, so you're known to be like a bit of a goofball, as you said, mm-hmm. and a weirdo. Mm-hmm. And I think that like really really shows and shines through your fashion because you're like a fashion disaster as you can see this is like his only nice outfit <laughs> excuse you excuse Just you no 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 Firstly, time out, time have out. you seen his no. outfit <laughs> wait okay time out. Time out. <laughs> see look guys mm. the difference between me and him is that he tries to be fashionable but he's really not i, I do don't not. try i just own this I just you own must know. this, you know. I own the hoodie. We both don't try. So <laughs> I look like this, and he looks like that. <laughs> so, right. first question. Mm. Why bucket hats? Okay. Let me tell you the only reason I own hats, okay? okay. Firstly, in my life, okay, one thing that I absolutely hate is accessories. Okay. I don't like, like, the only thing that I tolerate is my watch. Okay. Okay? Yes. Uh, anything else that requires, like, something to put on, like, for example, let's say you have put on... Gloves. I find it very uncomfortable. Okay. 
sunglasses uncomfortable caps and hats very uncomfortable yes but the reason why let me tell you why two main reasons the biggest reason is because my hair messy then i don't want to do anything about it <laughs> but why a bucket hat look see look mm. that hat would have been fine okay i was snapbacks the fine. the bucket okay i have i have a few types of caps and hats bucket mm. hats right were very very inspired by uh this guitarist uh <laughs> For the death of me, I can't remember his name. Okay. But uh, he only wear exclusively bucket hats. Okay. Right. So when I always wanted to get bucket hats. So like, when I went to uh, Thailand, yeah. right, then I was like, I got uh triggered by S J. This other guy, he was like, he got a bucket hat. And I was like, damn son, I remember this conversation that I had with myself. So I'ma get a hat. So I got a hat. Oh, a hat. And then after I went to Thailand. Uh, Taiwan after yes, that Taiwan. and then I saw a watermelon bucket hat and I was like hot damn that was all the ugliest shit I've ever seen in my entire life no 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 <laughs> it's the best shit it's coming from a guy that wears 24-7 watermelon bucket hat next question why you, you had this like three quarter pants oh face it looked, still, it looked still, like a skirt yeah kind of like a skirt kind of like not like a romper but <laughs> but a man romper why rom he rom Hey. Romp her and romp he. <laughs> oh my god. It's science, check your facts. I do okay, with this. I, I, I am a lover of oversized stuff, as you can see. Okay, this is a really big shirt. Yes. So, back then when I went, came back from Thailand, I bought an oversized shirt and then I went to Uniqlo and then I saw this $9 pair of pants mm. that were basically inspired by three quarter skater pants. Go and check those out, go and Google that. And I was like, that looks like a lot of fabric. It looks like I could be swimming in a blanket. <laughs> Let's go swimming. Seeing that you're a TSL personality. Yeah. I would say that like, TSL was like known for like senior, mm. Q, mm -hmm. Nicholas. Some people who have cleaned up very well. Mm -hmm. They have a very good fashion sense. Right. And all that. And I then, would say and I then fit the you. I would say I fit right in. You say that you, do you feel like self-conscious okay, when let you me... go on SG Try and you're wearing some weird ass shirt? With some terrible haircut. 100% no, because usually when I appear for shoots, okay, and I believe you all can go to your videos and check that out, I will style my hair, yes. I'll purposely wear a bit nicer, okay, and then like be a little bit more presentable for camera. Will you ever go on a shoot with your oversized t-shirt, homeless hair, and like a three-quarter Depending pants. on what kind of shoot. If they're asking me to go like some stay over, <laughs> absolutely. Check me out on $100 Nomad. I'm wearing whatever the heck I want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright. Can I try the chili crab? Yeah, actually, okay, yeah, you gotta try. We're supposed to react, right? <laughs> Let's roll it. No, I think it's not all get broken. One la. Chili crab. Probably sponsored by Zanish. I really hope that Lucky Beer sees this video, right? And decide that I should sponsor them. Oh shit. That'll be great. Lucky we have you hear this, right? This needs to happen. Shit, this is pretty I'll cool. only show your beer and I'll only say good things. So far, you've been saying nothing but good things right now. Oh, shit. This is pretty bomb, man. Eh? Yeah. So I think a lot of people know you as a TSL personality. But mm. before that, you had Obviously, you're yeah, alive before TSL. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't know that you actually started in sales after JC. How do you know How was that shit? like? <laughs> I did my homework. Okay, I so did my homework. Actually, it's not, not okay, after JC. Yeah, it was like actually after NS. Okay, after NS, okay. Yeah. So after NS, I got into a sales job mm. because um, I was looking for something to do. Okay. So a friend of mine recommended me to, into this the MLM kind of job but it's not really MLM la. so I got into sales and then that's how I sort of uh, got more and more experience to like talk to people and stuff like that mm. and I thought I learned a super a lot from like um, doing sales in general because what we did was road shows and events so that means you know those people that you try to see them desperately outside MRT so you're one of those I was one of those except I don't sell you insurance I think you also talked a little bit about your supervisor mm. and you really liked your supervisor Quite uh, yeah, I would say my boss was super in inspirational. Okay. So like, she was a lady boss with uh, who who basically started uh, 
like like her own branch kind of thing because the structure is a little bit complicated and I'm lazy to go into specifics lah. But like she worked really hard, uh, super good attitude and stuff like that, and then basically I lo- I, it inspired me a lot, you know, mm. especially in sales and in a lot of things lah. Okay, and I think we both are have been leaders before. I mm. mean, you're an officer. All right. Um, I think in Frisbee you had an ESCO role as well. I was a captain. I was a Frisbee captain. Mm. I think we all both know what a shitty leader is. Yes. And we both know what a good leader is. Yes. So after being in sales mm. and seeing their supervisor, what do you think distinguishes between a shitty leader, a shitty leader and a good leader? Like one defining trait. I think the most important thing to finding a good leader versus a shitty leader is a good leader will be able to put his money where his mouth is. Mm-hmm. So like, there's a difference between telling your, telling your uh, subordinates what to do yes. versus, versus showing your subordinates what to do. Okay. So like, so it's like the front line. Yeah. So when you lead okay. a bunch of people, you must earn their respect. And the best way to earn their respect is to show them that not only are you willing to do what they do, you're able to do it as well. And I think one other defining trait like, I have to add on to this because okay. I feel that like, Sometimes there are times, of course, leaders are human as well, right? Mm. A great leader is one that is able to admit that there are some things that they cannot do. Okay. After the sales like stint, you went to uni. Mm-hmm. So you went to SIM first. Right. And then after that, for six months? About, oh no, close to a year. Close to a year. And then you left SIM. Mm-hmm. And then you went to NTU. Yeah. So triple E. Let me E. Uh, ME, okay. Mm, so you went to engineering. Then three years later, you left again. Mm-hmm. Why? Alcohol. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so after going to SIM because my A levels were not that great, I was studying business. Study, study, study. Then after that, like, I think myself, my friends tell me, okay, I didn't know anything. Huh? My friends tell me, hey, actually, local U, the, the degree, right? Any degree also, like, a bit more prestigious. When you hear the word prestigious, right? Mm. You. Being me, being an ignorant, ignorant person, I, I should be like, whoa, prestigious sounds like a good word, sounds positive, let's try for that. Okay. But I didn't stop to consider like, what does this prestige mean? Mm. What does it mean? Can I get a better job? Can I get more money? Do I get more respect? It didn't have any sort of meaning, it was a very surface level passing comment that someone made. But I took it as gospel. So I was like, shit, I gotta get a local U. So I came to NTU, study MAE. When I reapplied, okay, it was so blind because like my then roommate, his name is JVs, he told me that uh, A level's not good, why don't you just come to engineering? Come to my mechanical engineering. I think you you, you got a chance because my A levels are not that good. So how blindly I followed was I didn't even apply to any other local U. I just essentially reapplied first choice mechanical engineering. And that's it? That's it. And you got in? And I got in because uh, mechanical engineering's uh, entry is not as competitive, mm. yeah. So I managed to get in that year, and then I get in really. Then I was like, "Damn, I'm here." And, and then, then what then. appealed to me in uni was definitely not engineering. <laughs> was all the hall stuff, all the friends, all the rabak nights and stuff like that. Mm. Then after that, I thought to myself that like by year one, year two, like that, right? In my head, I already knew that this is not something I wanted to do. Okay. But let me tell you, okay, when you're a uni student, right, the scariest thing to ever consider, if you're if you don't have the maturity, right, the scariest thing to ever consider is that you have to quit school or you have to drop your course or you're in the wrong place if you don't know what is going on. And I didn't know what was going on. Okay. So in uni, in NTU, I was like fumbling around, like, results were not good, very distracted, that what I studied didn't speak to me. And for me, when like I try to learn things that don't really speak to me, I face a lot of resistance within myself. I procrastinated, all the bad habits and stuff like that, right? Basically culminated in a shitty GPA and a shitty student experience, even though the uni life experience was great. Okay, so you wouldn't say that the entire NTU thing was like completely bad? No, it was not. It was not completely bad. In okay. fact, right, I'm very grateful for NTU because my time in NTU also sort of woke me up to the fact that there are some things that I have to accept if I cannot do now. Okay, like? So come year three. Yes. Right, then I told myself that like, you know what, I'm doing terribly, this is not going well, and then uh, still a little bit scared, I didn't know what to do. So I, uh, that was when my, that was the year when my grand- grandfather got ill. He had liver cancer and then he was like, like, 
basically he didn't have long. So that woke me up a little bit, especially when uh, towards the end and then when he was about to pass. Then I was thinking to myself like, shit, I have four grandparents, now I'm down to three and I am still in uni with nothing to show for, mm. right? And then I was still a very, very, very confused millennial, no target, basically still following a flow that I never totally agreed with in the first place. Yeah? Mm. So eventually what happened was uh, I decided to, you know what, uh, trust my instincts, follow my heart, pick up my, uh, buy a $100 DSLR, shoot some photos based on what I like, and just apply for internships like a madman, outside, mm. anywhere, do something that I liked. Because there was only one thing at that point of time, besides sleeping and playing video games, huh, that I thought that I liked, could be, that I could like put into action as a form of career, or a form of learning at least. Okay. Yeah. So when you, when you quit, do you know it was going to be photography? No. Honestly, right, when I quit school in NTU, I was going, I, would, I was building on a hunch. So I, I firmly believe that like, the only reason I discovered photography and basically doing work with a camera as a form of passion and a job, right, was because I decided to take the time to try okay. and like to apply for internships just purely for the sake of learning. I feel that a lot, of, a lot of people coming into universities and going out into the workforce, right, always forget that uh, what they should be pursuing is some form of learning or some form of excellence. And what they pursue is like a better life. Okay. Or what they pursue is like a proper job. These are terms that are loosely dropped by usually by our parents' generation and stuff like that. Mm. Mm. People neglect that sometimes when they come to uni, right, they're not here to get a degree. They're here to learn. Okay. So this was one of the biggest problems that I encountered and I didn't learn anything when I was in uni and the only thing I learned was that I didn't want to be where I was. So like how I discovered that photography was what, it, what, what was it for me, right? Mm. Was that as I did my internship in the Smart Local, right? So I applied my internship everywhere, uh, did my portfolio, shot for fun, eventually got an internship in the Smart Local, right? It drove me to shoot more. It made me excited to do more and it made me feel like what I was doing had meaning. Yes. As compared to when I was in school. So from then on it was just history. The rest is history. Do you ever feel like you have this extra chip on your shoulder or extra like need to prove yourself simply because of your education background or like what you went through? Yeah, when I when when I first started uh uh exploring the creative industry, this was one thing that bothered me a little bit more mm. and I believe sometimes it still bothers me a little the fact that like I do not hold a degree for example right mm. Pe I, I'm worried that like what if my future employer judges me so because I have to accept also that the world will not change just because I want it to yes. right or just because I decide to go against the current yeah so initially this was something that that motivated me and also sort of gave me a little bit more energy to try to improve and to like work a little bit harder than most people and stuff like that. But eventually I grew to understand that uh, there is no point in pegging yourself to other people's standards, but there is still a point to improve just so that you can be accountable to yourself. Mm. You know, there's a big difference between uh, having to prove yourself versus improving for yourself. If you keep thinking that you need to prove yourself to other people, you will be very miserable. But if you ever if you ever feel that you just got to keep upgrading yourself for yourself, right? Eventually, you will come to understand that like there are certain things, right, that will drive you further uh, than just mere comparison between people and uh, having to prove yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Kezia. Thank you, Kezia. Yes, rose. I like rose. Rose. Sparkling rose. How sparkling is it? I don't know. Let's go. This is delicious. I can. It's like a bit. It's like apple. I didn't expect it to be apple. It's elegant apple cider. It's not. <laughs> I didn't know. I saw rose. I just thought it was like those rose syrup. Kind of no! Thing. Since when is rose rose syrup? It's rose, okay? Please flame him in the comments, thanks. <laughs> That's good. So, the next question is about your photography. Okay. You say you started out with film photography. That was yes. a while ago. Mm. Now, film photography is getting more and more popular. Yes. Do you ever feel like it's damn irritating that hipsters are using film photography as a way to get more followers 
or it's just like a fair ending? Absolutely. Ending so you're pissed. I'm not pissed, but absolutely <laughs> because like, but also then again, it has re-sparked my interest for film photography mm. again, and now I'm back shooting film again. Sometimes I find that working in the creative industry for, makes you fall into a creative rut very easily. Yes. You will get creatively drained, you'll get a little bit tired, which is normal. Yes. You know, it's perfectly normal to fall into a creative rut. Mm. It's how you get out of it. So my coping mechanism is to be able to shoot and enjoy what I shoot. And that is film photography for me. Because for the first time, maybe in the whole week, for example, if I go out for a film shoot for fun, right? The entire week I'm using highly advanced digital cameras and getting all my shots, meeting my client requirements and stuff like that. Film medium is the first time where I sort of have a lot of restrictions and I'm unsure how the pictures will turn out. And uh, basically I just flex my eye without thinking about all the other things. Yes. And that is great. It's, a, it's an incredible freeing feeling, mm. which I think I discovered when I was in NS and that's I how agree. it sparked the whole thing in the first place. Mm. By, by virtue of one very important thing is that when I shoot, I cannot see. Yes. Yeah. I think, yeah, because I, I shot film as well. I didn't start with film, but I think like predominantly I did film. And that was like a while back. Mm. I really like film because like, there was a lot more emotions in film, in my yeah. opinion. Versus like digital photography. Yeah. It's so easy to go shutter, like trigger happy with yes. like digital camera. Just like, the shutters don't mean anything. Like yep. Shutter count doesn't mean anything. Exactly. Really. But for film, it's like, you have 36 shots. Mm -hmm. That's it. And it's yep. expensive, like yep. 36 shots. So you really think about it. Okay, so as a TSO person mm. who has done a lot of videos, a lot of photos as well, mm -hmm. I think I'm a creative and we all understand, like, Kisa's writer. I think we all mm. understand that like the work that we do that we are most happy with must might not, might not necessarily be the most popular. Correct. Might not be the most well received. Mm -hmm. So what is one video that you have done that didn't do well but you thought should have done a lot better? Okay. Personally, right, okay, the way I approach my work is usually in a different manner and not so simple. I'm usually uh, hypercritical about my work. Mm. And at the same time, okay, I, uh, my approach for work that is done uh, is like water that you toss out the window. Mm. When it's out there, it's out there. There's nothing I can do about it. I don't think about it. If it does well, I am grateful. If it does not do well, regardless, I will still move on. So mm. I move on from work that is done great and work that is done not so great mm. at the same pace. Okay. So... For me, I don't ever get caught up with or, or be overly sentimental about my work and tell myself like, crap, I put in so much effort, why is it not being like this? So this is something that I've come to accept that like, when you produce content for the general public mm. on a public platform, okay, 100% of the time, okay, you cannot expect that you will do well. Yes, like this. Yeah? This will definitely you not cannot do. expect that you can do well, but when it does well, you have to show your gratitude. Yes. And that is how you should approach, I would say, all work. You cannot go into any work, uh, even if it's creative or not, right? Expecting that the result uh, is gonna is gonna kiss your ass. You know, it's not. The world is not gonna kiss your ass. I want more chips. Okay. So it's like I would say you are like a pretty famous Instagrammer. Okay, just yeah. quite okay you have you're known for being ah. kind of an instagrammer yeah i guess so what's one thing that you wish people knew about being an instagrammer like what's one difficult thing that other people don't know they don't really understand because uh -huh. i think a lot of people feel like it's very easy to be an instagrammer just like kind of just take a photo edit it and dm but i tried it and it's not easy so what's one thing you wish personally people th personally la, if there's one thing that i feel that like Mm, one great hurdle about Instagram, I guess, if anybody wants to like proceed Instagram or like try to use Instagram as a media and stuff like that, right? Mm. Is that there are a lot of girls in various states of undress. <laughs> I think that's okay, yes, continue. I believe you all know what I'm talking about. So, girls in tiny tops, tiny shorts, and stuff like that, getting all the thousands and thousands of followers and likes. Yeah, so much so that sometimes I, I, there was a time where I used to question myself whether like, is this the platform it really that I want to post my stuff? Am I getting the right recognition for my portfolio and stuff like that? Mm. Eventually, I came to a point where I'm just like, you know what? 
Instagram is for me to have fun. That's right. Yeah. And I think that you produce the best work on your Instagram when you have the most fun. That's right. When so, you don't care about the views. Exactly. Don't care about the likes. Exactly. That's so you, so I realized yeah. that is what also kind of worked for me because I realized that when I do post what I like for fun and then uh, shoot what I like for fun yes. and use it for my photography and to show people what I experience, people like it. Yes. People like, I like, you have a lot of fun. If you want to grow an Instagram game, that's what you do. Alright, let's move on to the next question. Okay. I think you are in a very special category where like a lot of people who are content creators such as myself. Yeah. Say, I'm putting up this on YouTube. Right. I'm putting most of my videos on YouTube. Like, share, subscribe, watch other videos over here. <laughs> <laughs> but like there are a select few of people like Nas Daily, mm -hmm. like S Gag, like TSL, mm -hmm. who does their main with does a lot of their content geared towards only Facebook. Right. So now that Facebook is getting up, is going up. Now yeah. there's IGTV. Yeah, now there's yeah. YouTube. There's Vimeo there for like forever. Yeah, yeah. What is the landscape of social media you think in five to ten years? Okay. Personally, right, I think if you ask my if you ask me for my opinion of what the landscape is gonna be like for the whole general Facebook uh social media different platforms and everything right there, right? I think they're all gonna end up like Facebook. Okay. Which means unnecessarily noisy, overly noisy. There's gonna be so many things that you start to not be able to find what you want anymore. Okay. Yeah. So Facebook, right? Yes. It's a fantastic example because it is one of the best advertising platforms out there right now, but at the same time also it's one of the noisiest. Mm. So when you scroll your Facebook timeline, 100% of the time, you will scroll back. 100% of the time, you will scroll past a whole bunch of memes that your friends have shared. <laughs> Tell me it's not true. Yes. Yeah? So that is how noisy, yaki. Yeah, that's yeah. how noisy it has become. Everything is sort of memes, everything's for entertainment, so much so that it's so difficult for your advertisers to get people's attention. Yes. And eventually, okay, I feel that all social media, as they all get spread out, more and more people, it'll all be cheap memes and noise. So, does it matter? Okay, so like, I'll say the people who are championing quality content now, Wong Fu Productions, mm -hmm. Ginny Boy TV, these are the people who are, you know that production value is like, at the top of their mm -hmm. priority list, like, Butterworks, all mm -hmm. these people, like, do you think that these people, or like, the ty these types of channels are going to start phasing out really quickly? Uh, if okay. you continue down this path. Personally, I feel that it will not phase out because yeah. I believe all these content creators uh, know, know, know something about their own content that the audience does not. Mm. And that is how to get the audience to notice despite the noise. But one thing for sure is that as social media gets noisier, right, all these content creators with the focus of not joining the noisy crowd would have to try harder to get people's attention. And of course, Getting people's attention is always possible. Mm. It's just how much attention you can get. Yeah. So I'm excited in the sense that even though social media may get noisier, things may get a little bit messier, but all these content creators will also come up with new, exciting, interesting ways to catch people's attention. And I think that is worth taking a look at. Okay, so we talked a little bit about social media. I think, uh, it's time to go like to TSL. Mm -hmm. And I think as someone who is both behind and in front of the camera before, you have a very unique perspective as to like what makes a good video. Right. So what makes a viral video work? Honestly, okay. Yes. Honestly, yeah. I feel that there's only one criteria that you need to make a viral video work. Mm. You know, it's not how well your production is. It's not how well you can tell a story. It's not how well a particular thing sounds, you know, but it's how well you can keep people's attention. It is not just catching people's attention anymore. And I think that keeping people's attention is very, very, very important. Does it ever bother you, right? Mm. That people think that you're an asshole just because you play a lot of asshole roles and you're very, very good at playing those roles? The answer is no. Not at all. Not at all. Okay, so I'm very, get, very, very care. glad. I'm very, okay. very, very glad that I am in a very comfortable place with myself. Mm -hmm. That where whatever people think about me, I don't 
uh, react poorly to it. Yeah. So this this being an asshole character thing, right, is something that people actually have told me before and have mentioned that like, oh my god, you only play all the bad characters well. So like some of these bad characters, like locally, like with bad traits, I play them well. Uh, what if I remember by this? I realize this is uh, a non-issue lah because like after all, this is all just stuff on the internet is for entertainment. So much so, this extends to the fact whereby sometimes people may have certain comments about you in the social media comments section. Yes. So that is also something that I feel that people may feel like it defines them. Like for example, uh, Leia yes. used to receive a lot of hate just because she's there. People be like, oh my god, she's so irritating and stuff like that. Mm. Absolutely baseless stuff like that. So I think if you ever want to, <clears throat> I think if you ever want to be part of uh, the social media landscape, you cannot let any of these things mm. affect you and secondly, even if they do define you, you also cannot let it affect you. But I think it's a lot harder. I think it's very easy to go like, hey, I'm not going to care about what yeah. the comments say. Like for this show, I'm doing this for fun. Mm. I'm, I'm like right now, my attitude is I'm not going to care what the comments say. Mm-hmm. If they say it's boring, I'm like, yeah. what do I have to lose this for fun? Exactly. I'm not earning any money off this. But I'm very sure some comment right now in the comment section goes, I really hate this show. Mm-hmm. Unless it's irritating. Or maybe they don't even know yeah. my name. The guy in the red hoodie is very irritating. <laughs> I think I'll cry myself to sleep. That, 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 <laughs> and this is why I feel that there needs to be a, like a sort of paradigm shift or a mindset change. When you produce content, right, you're not out to please everyone. Yes. Yeah. And you must know that no matter what kind of kindness you do, even if it is an act of kindness, mm. you also cannot please everyone. Mm. So by virtue of that, right, what makes you think that uh, a content you produce will please everyone. You will not. Yeah. But you owe it to your viewers and the people who consume your content and do enjoy it. Yeah. Not to fall apart because of one bad person. For the last segment, our lovely assistant Kezia right now just opened Thank us you. a new beer, which is Kronenberg Blanc. Honestly, don't drink any more beers after you drink this one. Why? Because it's delicious. It even cheers with me. Mm-hmm. I haven't drink. Cheers. <laughs> <sighs> What's when you? It doesn't taste like beer. It's a bit lighter. It's delicious, right? It's a bit. There's like a little bit it's of very fruit, fruity, right? Yeah. A little bit fruity taste. Okay, so this is the last segment, mm-hmm. which is a recurring segment. We do it for every guest. It's called Blast from the Past. Alright! So basically, I stalked you guys on Instagram. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I stalked you guys on Instagram. 10 year challenge. And yes. And now I'm just going to show you some things that I found from stalking you. <laughs> the first one. Uh-huh. Is a picture of you with blue hair in uni. Why? In NTU. <laughs> okay. So in NTU, there's this thing called UOC, which is Union Orientation Camp. Yes. Okay. So my group, we were the... Uh, our group was the letter Z, la, Z group. Let's mm. just call it Z group, okay? Mm. Or Z group. So like, we were like... I was the OGL, which is the group leader, and I was like, Whoa! Let's do something crazy. Let's all dye our hair blue. So my aunt is a hairdresser. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Let's do this shit. So, I think that year, a few of us all dyed our hairs all to our different groups' color. It was like, it was great. Yeah? I went for the electric blue mm. uh, at my aunt's salon. Electric and, uh, blue. It was electric blue. It's not blue. just any other blue. It's I electric. tell you, it was glorious. <laughs> it was glorious. Uh, bleached my whole head, dyed it blue, loved it. To Would you so. ever go back to it? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you would 100% do it again? 100% I'm actually very shy and take a long time to warm up to people I just can't stand long awkward silences so I mask it with humour and noise Absolutely That is what you said Do you still stand by it right now? I stand by it right now (laughs) This is 100% how I react to people So you still say you're shy? I am and like literally no one else agrees with you. Initially, okay, let me tell you now, okay. Initially, the first meetings for me with people or solo one-on-one meetings where 
with acquaintances, right, are actually very, 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 very uncomfortable for me. But you're just like, but, you just champion it through. But I'm great because this is why I go back to the initial part of this video where I thank my sales people, my sales supervisors and my boss. Yes. Because I've learned to be able to carry small talk well to slowly warm up to people. Because I do realize that I have this long period of time where I need to warm up to people. And I realize that if I don't put in effort to warm up, it's going to be awkward. <laughs> so how do you awkwardly warm up without being actually showing people that you're awkward? Mm. And that is to generate your own small talk. That's right. 100%. There's, you still stand by it? Yes. So, 27, 27 going to 28 years old. Mm -hmm. Old as hell. You're basically a dinosaur. So... I am still young. <laughs> <laughs> so like 28 years, which is I think a lot long, a lot more than I think most of the people watching this video. Alright, true. What are some things you wish you knew at 21 years old or 22? Coming off NS, what do you wish you knew? I think I wish I knew what I wanted to do mm. in my life, with my life. Frankly speaking, I feel that everybody in life especially, right, they are just discovering what they want to do. Yes. You know, and every step of the way, this may change a little bit or it may change drastically. But I feel that 21 years old me, if I were to go back to 21 year old me, right, besides knowing what I wanted to do in life, uh, was to know that uh, I can be okay with whatever I did. Because I think a lot of people are confused, a lot of people are unsure, and then they are uh, blaming themselves for being confused and unsure, but they don't accept the fact that it's actually fine to be confused and unsure. Just because some other person seems to have their life all together, does not mean yours has to be. But at the same time, it does not mean you have to, you should stop and just, <coughs> doesn't mean that you should just accept, kill over and stop hmm. finding out what you want or what you want your life to be. That's right. So if I were to go back to 21 years old, probably will not do anything differently. Yeah. But I guess if I'm able to bring my current mindset back there, I might have executed some of the things a little bit differently but i wouldn't have done anything differently i think that's a very nice way to end it so let's end it off that's right with your sales experience mm. let's do a little segment 30 second plug why people should come onto this show mm -hmm. and why people should sponsor this show <laughs> okay, let's, too do, much, let's, but... let's do the why people should... <laughs> So he'll be the host from now on. I'm very bad at hosting. Yeah, I could really tell. Honestly, okay, I'm glad that you asked me asked me to, to join this project. Okay, personally, uh, Passion Project, the, th the name is HTHT. We're just here to talk. There's free alcohol. Alcohol helps your tongue come out a little bit more unless we get Muslim uh, people out here. Haven't figured that out yet, but we will. When you we'll probably the feed y'all a lot of sugar. So firstly, first things first, it's going to be great. You know, you're going to feel great here. It's going to be either tipsy or sugar high bouncing around. Looking forward to that. Secondly, uh, I'll be your host. So besides being uh, strangely attractive, uh, <laughs> pretty eloquent, able to relate with you a bit more. And... Uh, I think this series serves a good purpose because you're able to be yourself and like once again we're using social media to just to just do what we want. That's right. And I think not not, not many. That's all we want. You know what? Do what we want. Who knows if this video will do well? Probably Who knows not. if uh, <laughs> this video will go anywhere? But uh, let's get more people and then we'll just share our stories because I think there are a lot of people out there like me, like you, who have your story to tell but you have no, no platform to tell it. This is your platform. You will we'll sit here. Take anyone right I'm going to sit there. That's right. And then we'll press record. And then we'll have a few beers or sugar. And then we'll chit chat about it. Nice. Woo. I think it's a good way to end it. Bam, bam, bam. Remember to like, share and subscribe. This is amazing. Yeah. Before we start, let's give me a bit more. Again, Eureka. You don't sponsor us. Mm -mm. You'll be more than happy to receive like a like a delivery of Eureka popcorns and we just 
we just casually show it like this. It's like a branded content. We'll hold it like this so it don't cover the brand. 10 reasons why eating popcorn is the best shit ever. <laughs> it's a literary article. I don't know. We'll make the article for you, Rika. <laughs>